Commandos, attack! Secure the perimeter! The making of small soldiers. A behind-the-scenes tour of the new feature film from DreamWorks and Just Universal that. Pictures. Commando Lily! Fall in! We have met the enemy. He is big. He is fast. He has allied himself with a Gorgonite scum. Small Soldiers stars Gregory Smith, who is featured in the hit movie Harriet the Spy. Now he plays Alan Abernathy, a boy caught in the crossfire. He's an intuitive actor, and he's good at looking at things that aren't there, which is important in a movie like this. You know, some of it's computer animated, so sometimes there won't be a puppet there at all. And then some of the time, it's a little puppet, and there's a bunch of guys off camera controlling it with a remote control. And I mean, between takes, hey, Archer, how's it going? You know, you know, give you a high five, shake your hand, whatever. There will be no mercy. Kirsten Dunst, best known for her role in Interview with the Vampire, now plays Christy, the girl next door. You've done this before. Once or twice. And she's really a 15-year-old girl who is in no hurry to grow up, and is just together. They're just really charming, and, and they make it a lot of fun. Okay. Greg and I are really getting along, which is is important because we're supposed to be so close. And yeah, we've had so much fun, and we've been bowling and everything with our families and everything. So we're having fun together. Kevin Dunn, a familiar face to both film and television, plays Alan's father. These little guys are kind of the the stars of the movie, and you kind of lead from scene to scene to see what they're up to. What are you packing, Tiny? Packing you? Coming off the critically acclaimed HBO miniseries From the Earth to the Moon, Anne Magnuson plays a suburban mother with a mean backhand. I have to say that this is probably the most fun I've ever had on any movie set. The late Phil Hartman plays obnoxious neighbor Phil Fimple. I'm here to negotiate the surrender of the uh, Gorgonzolas. And Dennis Leary drops in to star as Globotech CEO Gil Mars, who has just made Heartland Toys his latest acquisition. Everything else is just a toy. Good looking, uh, smart, you know, uh, admired by men, uh, sought after by women, you know, kind of a, it's usually the type of roles I play. Bringing all of this madness to the screen is Gremlins director Joe Dante. I think a lot of the stuff that we're trying to do in this movie is, is pretty unique. I don't think it's really been done before on this scale. Commandos, target those Gorgonites. Go, go, go. Joe just knows how to do this kind of stuff. I mean, there's a very limited number of people that have the kind of imagination to you know, tell this to the actors, but the puppets are really the stars of the movie, and you have to make them look good. Uh, Joe's a sweet man, but I've had to direct this whole thing. Am I shiny? Where's my makeup? All right? All right. Joe brings a very calming attitude and, and creates a great atmosphere on the set. He's been through this type of movie. He's kind of a veteran. To create action figures with brains, the design and animatronics tasks went to multiple Oscar winner Stan Winston, yeah. who has created characters for scores of films, including Jurassic Park and Alien. We actually uh, it couldn't imagine having something more fun to deal with, considering the fact that every one of us, all of the artists and, and technical geniuses here that uh, are involved in it, come from a background where what you love are monsters and toys and puppets, and, and that's where we come from. Huh? The process begins in story conferences with Stan Winston's Creature Group. Then, artists complete detailed illustrations of the animatronic characters. Exact replicas of the action figures are sculpted, then cast in plastic. In the end, nearly one ton of urethane was used to make 237 figures. Well, the initial stage for us was uh, going with the script and then beyond the script and coming up with some really wonderful characters, the, uh, the Gorgonites and the, and the Commandos. Effects technicians design and install tiny motors to operate all of the moving parts. Puppeteers test the prototypes over and over again, further refining the designs until they appear lifelike. 23 on-set puppeteers were used to control the small soldiers. Sometimes, five puppeteers operating one character alone. 
The footage is then turned over to Academy Award-winning Industrial Light and Magic, where artists and technicians smooth out the live action scenes and digitally animate all of the larger movements. These artists had to come in now and duplicate the world that we had created. Our hats are off to, to all of the guys at ILM because they've done a brilliant job. I'm pretty messed up, sir. You know, the details on those characters are you know, pretty high, actually. I think Stan did a great, his team did a great job on, on designing these characters. But certainly the challenge for us here is that visually, because we're cutting from our shots to puppet shots and back, they have to fit very closely. First, an animatic is created. It's simply storyboard drawing superimposed over the live action footage. The animatic gives the filmmakers an idea of how the basic action will look in real time. Then wireframes of the character actions are created. The wireframe shows filmmakers the basic three-dimensional movements but requires less computing power and time. Next, a rough 3D animation is rendered. A modeler adds the details of the character right down to the grenade pins. Once the action is revised and approved, the computer transforms the movements into detailed photorealistic pictures, which are then output to film. You really have to trust ILM at various points, but they've been so great at coming up with unexpected bits of business for the characters and, and funny ways of making them walk and little reaction shots and, and things like that. And a uniquely talented group of actors were brought together to lend their voices to these incredible characters. Tommy Lee Jones' recognizable voice provides Major Chip Hazard with his cadence. Damn the torpedoes or give me death. It's fun to think of children um, enjoying a toy that's based on a character that you helped create. Hold your fire, man. Cool, you can talk. You must be the leader. It is time. Frank Langella is the more soft-spoken archer. I like doing this because you have to put um, every ounce of uh, commitment just into the sound of the voice and the words and the character's intentions. And if it's an animated character like this, a toy, it's even more interesting to try and make him come alive. The commando elite have destroyed Troglacom. Yeah, but what about all the other Gorgonites? Arcula. Punch it. Ugh. Scratch it. <laughs> Folks, what a dump. Allies to the Gorgonite cause are Christopher Guest, Michael McCain, and, I'm loving it. and Harry Shear from the rock documentary spoof, This is Spinal Tap. We, we all do a lot of different voices, and you just, it just sort of comes to you, you pick something out of a hat. We try to fix him. About the only non-instinctual part of the process is trying to avoid sounding like other voices that we're familiar with. But everything else is sort of just seat of the pants. We found like kind of a way to be earnest, but you know, not, not not to dry it out too much to find the you know the humor and uh, how serious everything is. I tell you, war is nuts, and I know what I'm talking about. We shouldn't fight. We should hide. We must help Alan. Enlisting as the Commandos are a group of veteran actors together for the first time since the classic war movie The Dirty Dozen. Ernest Borgnine, Jim Brown, George Kennedy, and Clint Walker. Joining them is Bruce Dern. your position. Bombshell, sir. Fully posable. <laughs> Those are reinforcements. I'm one of the people who gives the voices for um, Gwendy dolls. They're sort of like um, supermodel dolls. Hi there. I'll bet you're Cannon fodder Gwendy reporting for duty, sir. Oh, oh man, they shot you. Baby. Carry on, soldier. The task of bringing small soldiers to life was a collaborative effort with award-winning filmmakers, hundreds of artists and technicians, cutting-edge technology, a talented ensemble of actors, and one man at the helm. Audiences are gonna love this movie. Women will love me, and men will want to be me. A lot of innuendos and gossip have been spread on the set of a chip. I don't want to be a part of that. It's bad karma. Sometimes when you have a big star like this, you just have to you have to realize what you're dealing with. He had his own little chair and everything like that. They treat him good, <laughs> and he's the bad guy, too. He's a troublesome kind of guy, you know? He's got his own agenda. Next door, his trailer, there's parties going on nonstop. When I saw Chip, I just, something happened. He likes those strawberries cut up into about quarter-inch pieces with toothpicks in them. 
And uh, he, he likes them washed like four or five times, and he stands there and watches you while you wash them. And uh, he makes sure they're clean. He's real paranoid about uh, pesticides. He thinks that he's bigger than all the other actors, and in fact, he's very small. And he doesn't realize he's just a little little guy. You know, I could stomp on him if I wanted to. Who is this moron anyway? See, I don't work with puppets. It's in my contract, so that's why all my scenes, uh, there's actually no puppets in. Uh, I had a bad experience with, uh, with the Muppets, actually. Chip, he has a lot of anger that he has to work through. He needs to get in touch with his inner toy. We are the Commando Elite. Everything else is just a toy.